Hello, so remember that last time we were discussing the Legendre differential equation 1 minus x squared y double prime minus 2xy prime plus p into p plus 1y equal to 0. We tried a power series solution of this differential equation and we got two linearly independent solutions. And when this parameter p is a positive integer, non-negative integer k, then there is a polynomial solution. That is one of the power series solutions truncates and it gives you a polynomial of degree exactly k and this polynomial solution when it is normalized the solution is called the kth Legendre polynomial. What is the normalization? Take the polynomial solution. We proved that this polynomial solution f of x does not vanish at 1. There is f of 1 is not 0. So fx by f1 that's also a valid solution. This normalized solution is called pkx. So now let us summarize the three defining properties of the Legendre polynomials. You see the slide, it summarizes these three properties. The Legendre polynomial pkx satisfies the Legendre equation 1 minus x squared pk double prime minus 2x pk prime plus k into k plus 1 pk equal to 0. Remember the parameter p is exactly k. The normalization pk of 1 is 1 and the third condition is that pk is a polynomial of degree exactly k. So these three things characterize the Legendre polynomial. So now we got for k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. We got a sequence of Legendre polynomials p0x, p1x, p2x, p3x, dot, dot, dot. Let us understand the nature of the sequence. First thing I want to tell you is that it is an orthogonal system in L2 of minus 1, 1. Look at the inner product. Look at the slide, theorem 56. If k is not equal to L, then the polynomials pkx and plx are orthogonal in L2 of minus 1, 1. Integral minus 1 to 1, pkx, plx, dx is 0. Let's look at the proof of this orthogonality. We begin by the differential equations. pk satisfies the differential equation, so we get 5.8 and pl satisfies the differential equation, that is 5.9. So we've got these two equations 5.8 and 5.9, 1 minus x squared pk double prime minus 2x pk prime plus k into k plus 1 pk is 0 and 1 minus x squared pl double prime minus 2x pl prime plus l into l plus 1 pl equal to 0. These two equations will be written in a more convenient form known as the self-adjoint form. When you have a differential equation, a general differential equation y double prime plus f of x y prime plus g of x y equal to z. This is not in self-adjoint form. You see that equation 5.10 ddx of 1 minus x squared pk prime. In general, one should write it as ddx of phi of x into y prime plus some qxy equal to z. That will be called a self-adjoint form of a second order ODA. Here the phi x is 1 minus x squared as you see. So 5.1 and 5.11 are the self-adjoint forms of the differential equation. So let us see how to use this self-adjoint form. Let us multiply 5.10 by plx. Multiply 5.11 by pkx. And you integrate from minus 1 to 1 and perform an integration by parts and subtract. Let us see what kind of terms are you going to get. So you multiply 5.10 by plx and are integrating from minus 1 to 1. When you integrate by parts, the derivative shifts to plx. So you will get minus integral minus 1 to 1, 1 minus x squared into pk prime pl prime. The same term will arise when I manipulate 5.11. When I manipulate 5.11, multiply by pk and integrate by parts, the same term will appear. So the term appearing from integration by parts cancels out. 
But when you integrate by parts, there is a boundary term. What is the boundary term? Let us look at it very carefully. 1 minus x squared pk prime times pl. This has to be evaluated at 1 and also at minus 1 and you have to subtract. But when you evaluate it at 1 or at minus 1, it's going to be 0 because you see the factor 1 minus x squared staring at you. So the boundary terms coming from integration by parts drop out straight away. And so the only thing that's going to survive is k into k plus 1 minus l into l plus 1. There's a constant comes out of the integration. Integral minus 1 to 1 pkx plx dx equal to 0. Now k is not equal to l. Remember when k is not equal to l, k into k plus 1 will not be equal to L into L plus 1. Remember that K and L are both non-negative integers. So this condition will tell you that K into K plus 1 minus L into L plus 1 is non-zero. So what remains is integral minus 1 to 1 PKX into PLX DX is 0. In other words, the PK and the PL are orthogonal vectors in L2 of minus 1, 1 with respect to the usual Lebesgue measure dx. So that gives you theorem 57. The Legendre polynomials p0x, p1x, da da da, pnx form a complete orthogonal system. But wait, we have checked orthogonality. What about completeness? What does it mean to say that a subset B consisting of non-zero vectors in a Hilbert space is a complete orthogonal system? It means it will be orthogonal first of all. It's a set of non-zero vectors such that any two of them are mutually orthogonal. That we have checked. What we are not checked is the other condition, the other requirement that the linear span of the set B must be dense in the Hilbert space. Now let us look at the second property carefully. P0x, P1x, P2x, etc. What is Pkx? It is the polynomial of degree exactly k. So P0x is a polynomial of degree 0, a constant polynomial and the constant polynomial must be 1 because Pn of 1 is 1. Remember the normalization? P1x is a polynomial of degree exactly 1. P2x is a polynomial of degree exactly 2, etc. So what is the linear span, for example, of P0, P1, P2? You are going to get all the quadratic polynomials. The linear span of P0, P1, P2 is the same as the linear span of 1x x squared. Likewise, the linear span of P0, P1, P2, da da da, Pn is the same as the linear span of 1x x squared, da da da, Xn. In other words, if I take the linear span of the full thing, P0x, P1x, P2x, dot dot dot, I am going to get all the polynomials. But... What does Warstas approximation theorem tell you? The Warstas approximation theorem tells you that the set of all polynomials is dense in C of minus 1, 1. But dense with respect to which norm? With respect to the sup norm. So the polynomials are dense in C of AB, where AB is a closed bounded interval in R with respect to the sup norm. But density with respect to the sup norm will imply density with respect to the L2 norm, right? Because if a sequence of polynomial converges to F in sup norm, it will converge to F in L2 norm as well. So if I take the linear span of P0x, P1x, P2x, da da da, Pnx, and I take its closure in the L2 norm, I'm certainly going to get all the continuous functions, but that's not enough. I want all the L2 functions. So we need to go one more step. Now, what is the essential ingredient in going from continuous functions to L2 functions? Our good old friend, Lusin's theorem. So it follows by an application of Warstas approximation theorem and Lusin's theorem that this system of polynomials is going to be a complete orthogonal system and that completes the proof of theorem 57. Now we come to a very useful lemma called the fundamental orthogonality lemma. What is the fundamental orthogonality lemma? We have a vector space V endowed with a 
inner product. You could also work with a complex vector space with a Hermitian product. Take your pick. Now we are going to take two systems of vectors v0, v1, v2, da 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 and w0, w1, w2, da da da. Both these systems are orthogonal systems of non-zero vectors. The vectors are all non-zero and if I take any two vectors in one of these families, they are mutually perpendicular. Further, we are going to assume that if I take the first k plus 1 vectors in the first system and take its linear span, I'm going to get exactly the linear span of the first k plus 1 vectors in the second system. In other words, linear span of v0, v1, da da da, vk is the same as the linear span of w0, w1, w2, da da da, wk for each k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. That's a quite a strong condition as you will soon realize. If these conditions are satisfied, then there exists scalars ck such that vk equal to ck wk. Of course, this ck cannot be zero because vk and wk are both non-zero vectors. The proof is an easy exercise. First, think of what happens when you work in Rn, the usual Rn. Suppose I give you say R3 and I give you vectors v0, v1, v2 which are mutually perpendicular non-zero and I give you vectors w0, w1, w2 vectors which are mutually perpendicular non-zero. What does the condition tell you? Span of v0 equal to span of w0. Remember for k equal to zero? Span of v0 equal to span of w0 means what? v0 and w0 are two non-zero vectors and they have the same linear span. That means that v0 must be a multiple of w0. That means that v0 and w0 are aligned in the straight line. They both lie in, this, in one single line. Now, what happens? v1 is orthogonal to v0. w1 is also orthogonal to w0. And span of v0, v1 is the same as the span of w0, w1. The linear span of two vectors is a plane. Let us call this plane P. So span of v0, v1 equal to P equal to span of w0, w1. So in this plane, so now think of the plane. In this plane, we got this line, remember? The linear span of v0 and the linear span of w0 they form a line. Let us call this line L. Now in this plane, we've got a line L and where is V1 sit situated? Perpendicular to L. Where is W1 situated? Again perpendicular to L. So we've got a plane, we've got a line. You're going to draw, draw a perpendicular line, L prime. So that L prime and L are perpendicular. Both V1 and W1 are aligned along this L prime. Therefore, V1 must be a constant multiple of W1. So that's the case for k equal to 1. The same thing will be true for k equal to 2, 3, etc. Do it by induction if you like. So please think about this geometrically in the context of R3 or R4 or Rn. And the general case will follow along similar lines with a simple induction. Now, let us look at a simple corollary of this fundamental orthogonality lemma. Let us look at 1x x squared dot dot dot. Let us subject this system to the Gram-Schmidt's process. When you subject it to the Gram-Schmidt's process, what's going to come out? You're going to get a bunch of vectors which are mutually perpendicular. Let us call the vectors r0 of x, r1 of x, r2 of x, dot dot dot. But the linear span of 1x x squared will be the same as the linear span of r0 x, r1 x, r2 x. Likewise, the linear span of 1x x squared dot 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 x to the power n is the same as the linear span of r0 x, r1 x, r2 x, dot dot dot, r n x. Remember, r0, r1, r2 are the vectors that I get by subjecting 
वन एक्स एक्स स्क्वायर एक्सेट्रा टू द ग्राम स्मिथ्स प्रोसेस सो वॉट डू वी गेट लीनियर स्पैन ऑफ आर नॉट कमा आर वन कमा डॉट डॉट आर एन इज अ सेम एज द लीनियर स्पैन ऑफ वन एक्स एक्स स्क्वायर डॉट 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 एक्स एन बट दैट इज अ सेम एज द लीनियर स्पैन ऑफ पी नॉट एक्स पी वन एक्स डॉट 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 पी एन एक्स बट नाउ लेट इज अप्लाई द फंडामेंटल ऑर्थोगनैलिटी लेमा with the first system to be p not p1 p2 da 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 pk and the second one will be r not r1 da 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 rk and this condition is satisfied p not p1 p2 are the legendre polynomials r not r1 r2 are the polynomials that i get by subjecting this to gram schmidt and this span condition that is displayed here is also satisfied what does this tell you this tells you that the legendre polynomials pk is ck times rk in other words when i take 1 x x squared etc and subject it to the gram schmidt's process the result is going to be the sequence p not by norm p not p1 by norm p1 da da pk by norm pk the legendre polynomials except for scaling factors is precisely the system of polynomials i get by subjecting 1 x x square da 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 to the gram schmidt's process you will realize the value of this fundamental orthogonality lemma if you try to prove this directly try to apply the gram schmidt's process to 1 x x square as you do in the linear algebra courses in elementary linear algebra and try to determine the resulting polynomials you will appreciate the value of this fundamental orthogonality lemma now we are going to use this fundamental orthogonality lemma in a very different way exercise let us consider this polynomial q n x is the nth derivative of x squared minus 1 to the power n x squared minus 1 to the power n is a polynomial of degree 2n a differentiated n times and i get a polynomial of degree exactly n let us look at this system of polynomials q n let us check what happens when you integrate qnx qmx dx from minus 1 to 1 and m is not equal to n so let us assume without loss of generality that m is strictly less than n so here we got m derivatives and here we got n derivatives what is the obvious thing to do integrate by parts throw the derivatives from the qn term to the qm term how many derivatives will shift from here to there n derivatives will shift from here to there qm is a polynomial of degree exactly m and i'm differentiating it n times and n is strictly larger than m so the result will be zero but there's one small thing that we need to worry about every time we apply the integration by parts there will be boundary terms do the boundary terms cancel out they will indeed cancel out every time you perform the integration by parts the boundary terms will collapse to zero why would it collapse to zero look at this polynomial x squared minus 1 to the power n 1 and minus 1 are both zeros of multiplicity n what does it mean to say that a polynomial has 1 as a zero of multiplicity n it means a polynomial vanishes at 1 its derivative vanishes at 1 etc all derivatives up to and including order n minus 1 vanish at 1 and these derivatives up to and including order n minus 1 are exactly the ones that will appear when you integrate by parts and all those as boundary terms and so those boundary terms will all cancel out and they'll become zero so what we have established is that these polynomials q and x are also an orthogonal system of polynomials so we have got here q not q1 q2 da 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 it's an orthogonal system of polynomials p not p1 p2 da 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 is another orthogonal system of polynomials a legendre polynomials and qn has degree exactly n so the linear span of q not q1 da 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 qn is exactly the linear span of 1 x x square da 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 x to the power n but that's also the linear span of 
P0, P1, P2, da, 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 Pn. So again, the fundamental orthogonality lemma can, is applicable. In the first system, I take P0, P1, P2, etc. For the second system, I take Q0, Q1, Q2, etc. And I will get that the Legendre polynomial Pk is Ck times Qk. So I have proved that the Legendre polynomial Pnx is Cn times Qnx for some constant Cn. And now we need to figure out what is this constant Cn. Let us try to figure it out. How do you figure out the constants? Put x equal to 1. Put x equal to 1 in this equation. What is Pn of 1? It is 1. So 1 equal to Cn times Qn of 1. So let us try to calculate Qn of 1. We want to put x equal to 1 over here. How would I find out what am I going to get? You have to do it a little cleverly. Write this as x minus 1 to the power n into x plus 1 to the power n. You are taking the nth derivative of a product of two things. You have to apply the Leibniz formula for the nth derivative of a product. Now various terms will appear. n choose k into stuff where k derivatives will fall on the first factor and n minus k derivatives will fall on the second factor. Now one of the factors is x minus 1 to the power n. If k derivatives fall on x minus 1 to the power n and if k is strictly less than n, then an x minus 1 factor will be left out and that will disappear when I put x equal to 1. So when you apply the Leibniz rule for the nth derivative of product and we are going to put x equal to 1, only one term will survive namely all derivatives fall on x minus 1 to the power n that will give you n factorial. In the second no derivative falls on x plus 1 to the power n you get 2 to the power n. So what do we get? 1 equal to cn into 2 to the power n n factorial. So cn is what? 1 upon n factorial into 2 to the power n and that has given us an explicit expression for the nth Legendre polynomial 1 upon 2 to the power n into n factorial, the nth derivative of x squared minus 1 to the power n. This beautiful formula was derived by Olin Rodrigues. There is a beautiful article on the life and works of Rodrigues in the book review by W.P. Johnson in the American Mathematical Monthly, Volume 114, October 2007, page 752 to 758. I am giving you the link for this article by Johnson on Olin Rodrigues. Here are some exercises on the use of the Rodrigues formula and other things. So use Rodrigues formula and orthogonality of Pn, integration by parts and so on to compute integral minus 1 to 1 Pn x the whole square dx. We have seen that if I take m is not equal to n then integral from minus 1 to 1 Pn x Pm x dx is 0. What if m is equal to n? It's not going to be 0. You are integrating a perfect square of a polynomial and you're going to get a positive number. I want to look at pn x upon norm pn x. So I want to calculate the norm pn in the L2 in the product space. You need to calculate this. We will do this later. The other thing is computing integral from minus 1 to 1. 1 minus x squared pn prime x whole squared. There is 2n into n plus 1 upon 2n plus 1. Now for here to multiply the differential equation by pn and integrate by parts. Third exercise which we are going to do next time is a deduction from Roderick's formula. One of the things that we are going to deduce from Roderick's formula is that the nth Legendre polynomial pnx has exactly n distinct zeros in the interval minus 1, 1. Of course, it's a polynomial of degree n. It can't possibly have more than n roots. But how do I know that it has got exactly n roots and these roots are distinct and they lie in minus 1, 1. That's a lot of information about the location of roots of a certain polynomial. And we want to use the Roderick's formula to show that all the zeros of P and X are real they are distinct and they lie in the interval minus 1, 1. Why would you be bothered about the 
presence of these zeros. These zeros were used by Gauss in 1814 in his famous quadrature formula in numerical integration. A nice reference for this is the book by S. Chandrasekhar on radiative transfer published by Dewar in 1960. We will do this exercise later. Another important feature about the Legendre polynomial is that this sequence of Legendre polynomials P0, P1, P2, etc., they satisfy a three term recursion formula n plus 1 pn plus 1 minus x into 2n plus 1 pn plus n into pn minus 1 equal to 0. We will see later that the Chebyshev's polynomials, the Hermite polynomials, they all satisfy a three term recursion formula. This kind of three term recursion formula is a very characteristic feature of orthogonal systems of polynomials. We may recall that the Bessel's functions also satisfied a three term recursion formula. We had a relationship between j n x, j n minus 1 x and j n plus 1 x and that involved an x if you remember carefully. I think this would be a very good place to stop this capsule. Thank you very much.